Well, we're joined live now by expert on political and geostrategic issues, Javid Rana. Javid, thanks for coming onto the programme. Um, President Trump, he's in the Korean demilitarized zone. Beyond the symbolic gesture, what do you think the purpose of this meeting is going to be? I think President Donald Trump wants to be seen that he's a, he's a kind of leader uh, who's for peace, who doesn't want a war. And he wants to be seen to be different to the uh, 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 former President Obama's administration. And something he did point out today in, uh, in his press conference with South Korean uh, leader. And I think that's a very important point. He said, had there been Obama administration, uh, uh, the USA would have been at war with the North Korea. I think that is a, is a posturing that he is trying to uh, create, particularly when it comes to the question of handling uh, North Korea. But I think in a, in a, in a very broader picture, uh, the President Donald Trump knows that the fact of the matter is that the North Korea is a nuclear state. Uh, the fact of the matter is that it has potential to possibly use intercontinental ballistic missiles against the U.S. So North Korea is a threat. Uh, and it, their nuclear sites cannot be dismantled. So a country which is already nuclear powered, uh, there is a different me mechanism to handle it. And I think that me uh, different mechanism is negotiations. Maybe it is a baby step. Every President Donald Trump has been under fire that uh, previous two meetings with the, uh, with the North Korean leader, they collapsed. They, they, those meetings did not produce any result. So what is the point of having a third meeting? I think. President Donald Trump is a pursuing a policy whereby at least he can manage a tension with North Korea. Now, at least there is a perception there is no war between North Korea and the U.S. But giving you a broader, bigger picture, what is going to be the uh, possibly a template of a solution, the crisis that the uh, Korean Peninsula has been going through. I think at the end of the day, if somebody is expecting that the North Korea is going to dismantle its nuclear pro uh, program, I think they would be living in fool's paradise. That's not going to happen. North Korea is seeking maximum concessions. To begin with, they want uh, lifting of economic sanctions. And then I think in return, uh, probably, and they have already, by the way, have already done, they have put moratorium on the on the nuclear test. They are not conducting long-term missiles tests, though they conducted the short-term uh, short missiles test a few months back. So I think uh, at the end of the day, probably the deal could be that the North Korea may be ready to bring down this nuclear stockpile, maybe reducing the number of the nuclear warheads they, they possess. But if somebody says that North Korea is, would be ready to go for a complete denuclearization, I think that is something easier said than done. Uh, Americans are pursuing a policy where they want that no one in the world should possess a nuclear weapons other than the USA. That's not going to happen. Look, what happened with the Libya? Libya had a nuclear Javid, program. I'm just gonna, and, Javid, I'm just going to butt in there. You, you say it's not going to happen, but they're still pursuing it, aren't they? If we look at the, the strategy that we've seen from the US and from Donald Trump, they have had two meetings. Uh, we hear a lot of rhetoric about how positive the meetings are, but nothing's happened, as you rightly pointed out. Uh, th this meeting uh, was proposed on Twitter, so we don't even know if uh, Kim Jong-un is going to show up. Um, what does that mean then? If, if, if you say that they're not going to give up this, this program, they're not going to do that easily, what, what are going to be the next steps? Are the US going to have to back down? I think as long as President Donald Trump is there, uh, at least we are not going to expect uh, the kind of the rat tricks that the US used to have uh, two, uh, five, six years back. I think the tension is going to be managed. That is. Uh, what Donald Trump is doing excellently, though the Pentagon is not very happy with uh, there. Uh, there is also resentment within the within the U.S. administration. The manner with which Donald Trump is handling the diplomacy, I, I think uh, he 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 right from the day one when he, he had he had launched his election campaign, he was against a war. Now he has been caught on one side. He is giving a mixed signals that he wants to have a war with Iran because it, it can possibly have a nuclear weapons. On the other side, it, it's, it's a giving a, a signals that, no, we don't want a war with the North Korea. I think the world 
and the particularly the U.S. is a driven by the hard geostrategic reality. Uh, Iran is under threat of being attacked because it doesn't have any nuclear weapons. Uh, the Iraq was attacked because it didn't have the nuclear weapons. Uh, Libya was attacked, it didn't have the nuclear weapons. North Korea would not be attacked because it has the nuclear weapons. Pakistan would never be attacked because it has the nuclear weapons. So it is the uh, ground reality uh, with which uh, the situation is heading. And I think Donald Trump understands this, that in, uh, North Korea cannot be handled with the threats of the war because if uh, Americans can use nuclear weapons against North Korea, North Korea can also retaliate with the nuclear weapons. So the world is driven by the geo hard geostrategic uh, realities. And I think the policy of the previous G uh, governments in the U.S., that has, uh, that has collapsed. So President Donald Trump is coming up with the new ideas. He's uh, trying to behave differently. He's uh, trying to conduct a diplomacy beyond the traditional methods of the diplomacy. So I think sooner or later he will have something to go uh, to take back home and i i don't expect there there is going to be denuclearization of north korea that is not going to happen well javid um again obviously donald trump is um trying to put himself as the peacemaker nevertheless and and, and you've mentioned all the countries you know where they've threatened war almost um, and you say that that's not happening with North Korea. But there has been very difficult relationships between the two leaders with very crude remarks from President Trump. Before we talk about this, let's listen to some of them. They will be met with fire and fury. And we can't have madmen out there shooting rockets all over the place. We will have no choice but to totally destroy North Korea. How do you think, uh, if someone was to call you those uh, statements, you know, how, how is he trying to develop and even restore relationships with the leader there if he was willing to use that rhetoric? And, and we're pretty sure that he might, we don't know how he's going to react or what he's going to say, he might use that rhetoric again. Do you think things have really changed? There is a method in the madness, and that madness is that the... President Donald Trump first tried to bully countries. Uh, and then if they, they don't get bullied, then actually he surrenders himself. Let me tell you what happened in case of Pakistan. When he came to power, he threatened Pakistan with the consequences. And then when Pakistan simply did not listen to him, and we had a new prime minister, Imran Khan, who responded him back in the same language. And just within a matter of few days, he wrote a formal letter requesting Pakistan to facilitate a negotiated settlement in Afghanistan. Uh, so similarly, in case of Iran, uh, he, he said that it, the, we can, Amer Americans can obliterate Iran, and then he's, he found excuses to say we don't want a war. I think that is his method. And similarly, he used the same method. First, he tried to bully North Korea. North Korea didn't listen to him. They retaliated with a similar rhetoric. And then the end result is that now Donald Trump is holding negotiations with the North Korea. And no, uh, practically, it is on the terms and condition of the North Korea, because we don't know what his agenda. Uh, he's saying that he just came to the demilitarized uh, zone to say hello to the Kim. Uh, I mean, he doesn't have the agenda. I think he is uh, uh, now playing with the media. He's uh, playing with the politics. Next year, uh, there are presidential elections in the U.S. Uh, he is going to go with the election campaign that he's the one who didn't initiate a war against any country, though I think it is difficult to say that still Iran is high on agenda, given the fact that Israel is putting a lot of pressure on the, U on the U.S. to go for a war with Iran. So I, uh, I think... The, we need to understand the tricks, tactics, and the manipulations that the Donald Trump has been putting in place. I don't think he wanted war with the North Korea. Even at right in the beginning, he tried to bully him, uh, came, and then when it didn't work, he has simply surrendered to his terms and conditions. And Kim is playing very smartly. Uh, I think. Uh, he will uh, most probably he will give assurance to the president Donald Trump that he will uh, dismantle some of his uh, nuclear complexes 
some of the nuclear sites. Uh, he would uh, put moratorium on the long-range uh, uh, anti-ballistic missiles program. Uh, he will. He has already put uh, moratorium on the on the nuclear test, and then in return he would try to seek certain concessions to get some relief uh, in lifting the new, uh, economic sanctions. Uh, and I think at the end of the day, the point that earlier on I I made uh, that probably uh, North Korea would would like to retain uh, some sort of uh, uh, nuclear deterrence, which means uh, some sort of nuclear stockpile, okay, nuclear yeah. warheads. And then the last point I want to make is it's important. Uh, Americans will have to withdraw its forces from the uh, uh, Korean Peninsula. I mean, in, in any possible deal, uh, Americans should get ready themselves. Uh, that is an extremely important point. Okay, Javid, let's hope that they have more of just uh, more than just hello when they meet, if indeed they do. Thank you, Javid, uh, for talking to us. Javid Rana, political and geostrategic uh, expert. Thank you.